This webinar is presented by Technical Toolboxes on AC assessment, corrosion prediction, safety, and mitigation. We will be using the quick guide as a reference to AC mitigation. This power tool has unlimited capabilities for both pipelines and electric transmission lines. It can model and mitigate uh, AC corrosion, AC induction to determine the integrity of the pipeline. In addition, it has been developed uh, to model so you can modify and design your CP systems to reduce the AC current density effects. Some of the features of this Skybox, or power tool, consists of complex corridors with unlimited pipes and high voltage transmission lines. It has integrated modeling that can follow complex systems. You're allowed to do multiple scenarios to run steady state, fall current, and mitigation in minutes, not hours, both for multiple and individual graphs. It allows manual and uh, Excel data input. The data can be visualized uh, using the graphs in Google Earth. It has a cloud and desktop version. It has detailed reports with data and graphs. And the best of all is the mitigation strategies that come with this. As I stated earlier, uh, Having the GIS capability with Google Earth is great for visualization of both the power and tower locations. It's faster computing, lat longs, interim reports that can be generated, data validation, error checking, as well as the design for bonds and multiple mitigation cables. We are going to go to Appendix A, where all of this starts. But first, we need to log in. You need to have your email address, and you need to get a password from our sales group. I'm going to log in, as you could see. And as you notice, it says this site says I have 55 days remaining on the login. Yours will have the same thing. In your case, if you get the free uh, 30 days, it'll tell you when your time is up. First, we're going to go to steady state. We're going to design a mitigation system for two pipes and, and a tower. The first thing we start with is adding a power transmission line. As you can see in the left-hand corner, We have the ability to uh, add pipelines, transmission lines, but we need to start with a transmission line first uh, in this menu. We're going to add the transmission line. We have four circuits that we could deal with. We have horizontal, double circuit, single circuit, vertical, and then double horizontal. Double horizontal is typically the one that uh, has the higher voltages and currents. Let's take a 345 kV system. And if you notice up here on, in the right hand corner of, of add transmission lines, we have some lat longs in here in decimal degrees. And if you notice, they're separated by commas and parentheses. We have a beginning lat long and an ending lat long for the transmission line. And if you notice that the currents, and this is the key, this is defaulted, these can be changed. Almost anything on, on, this, on, on this data input could be changed. And the reason for it is because power transmission lines operate at different currents during seasonal changes. For the purpose of this, we're going to accept the, the default of 500. 
but it's not uncommon to have 750 amps during the summer for, for this type of a transmission line. We're going to continue. And lo and behold, did you notice that it put a lat long of where the line is located? The second thing we're going to do is let's add two pipelines to this equation. And the first one we're going to add, we're going to add a pipeline. Uh, I'm going to hit Add Pipeline to the right with the plus. And you notice it defaults to a 30 inch. We're going to edit it. And we're going to make this a 12 inch line. We're going to make it uh, minus 3 feet burial depth. Another key component or primary factor is, is the coating resistance. And my suggestion is, is that you take measurements in the field to determine what that value is. And you could get that from the NACE standards on coating conductance. We also need to determine if the pipes are isolated or not. So, so we're going to say they're isolated, so we check Check the boxes on this. And you notice the lat longs up here of the way the line runs in the field. We're going to update this information. And we're going to add one more line. And you notice it defaults to the first one. We're going to edit it, and we're going to make it a 20-inch. It has minus three feet, and we could make this one, we could change the conductance on this to 500, or let's make it 800. And it has 16 mils, or 16 thousandths of an inch, and this too is isolated, and we'll update it. Now what's the next thing? We have to add sections. So let's add our first section. And this is the menus down below. We're going to add a section. And you notice it defaults to 2,000 feet, 15,000 ohm centimeter. And here's your cumulative length, and here's your cumulative uh, miles. I'm going to change this to lengths of 1,500 feet. And we're going to make the soil resistivity we determined that it was 2,500 ohms all the way. We could change it for every section if we want. OK? The next thing is we're going to look at how far first pipe, that's the 12 inches from, from that tower. So we know that one's 50 feet. Now let's make it um, 70 feet. and. Uh, it has an angle of zero degrees, which means it's running parallel. And we'll make the second one 150 feet, the second line. You notice I check the boxes each time. We're going to add another section. And you notice it repeats itself. 1,500, 2,500 ohm centimeter, et cetera. We're going to add a third section. And we'll add a fourth section. But let's put a PI in there. We're going to bring the tower or the or the pipe, the first pipe, a little closer to the tower. So we're going to give it about a uh, 40 degree angle. Check that check that box. And we're going to edit this, and we're going to say that it is um, 150 feet. Where 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 it changes angle. And then we're going to add another section in there. And we're going to do the same thing, 150, except we're going to bring it to a to a 50 degree angle. Oh, this one. And the second line will stay the same. Let me check this other one. I'm not sure if it stayed. Oh, here, 40. Need to put 40 in there. OK, you can always go back. Then we're going to add another section. And we're going to go back to the 1,500 feet. Let's edit this. I'm going to add one more zero, update. 
and we're going to change the angle here to back to zero. And then we'll add one more section in here. We're done. We just we're going to mitigate approximately about a mile and a half of pipe. Okay, so what do we do next? How about if we save it? We'll save the case. We'll get it in the, give it a number of two. We'll save it. It says this site is successfully saved. What's next? How about if we calculate it? Save and calculate. Right. Ah. Let's the, to avoid the confusion, let's take a look at it. So, so it looks like pipe one, which is the closest one, has about uh, a little over 26 volts on each end. And pipe two has about uh, almost 21 volts on each end with potentials down near the bottom here, uh, several volts. So what would that tell us to mitigate? Where would we want to put our mitigation? Are we there yet? Absolutely. This is the beauty of this software. So we're going to do a mitigation strategy. So let's try to mitigate. So we know that section one and the last sections are probably the ones where we need to spend some money on. So we could put a distributed anode, anode bed system in there. We could go parallel if we wanted to. We have a multiple choices, or we could put a discrete ground bed at the end to see how that works. We have multiple choices, and you could use combinations to bring the voltages down. So let's try number one, and we're going to we're going to do a distributed. And if you look into um, your quick guide, for a distributed system, what you will find is is the explanation of, of how how this can be um, determined, the number of anodes, and, uh, et cetera. And um, I would suggest you read that in detail to get used to the type of mitigation. And we're going to do it on both of them. In addition to that, we're going to bond them. And by bonding pipe one and two together. And then uh, what I'm going to do is um, make sure these are checked, calculate the output. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to create a new, new file called to mitigation. Save and calculate. And look what we did. We brought the voltages down on one end down to um, approximately 4 volts. Well, it looks like uh, that strategy is working. Let's go back to mitigation again. Let's go back to the second section. I'm going to do it to number 7. We're going to add the same strategy here. Check. Check. We're going to calculate the output. We're going to we're going to update uh, to mitigation. Save and calculate. It says it was saved. And now we could see that we've brought it down to about maybe nine volts uh, on one end almost 9 volts, and almost 10 volts on the other end. What else can we do? Well, I don't think the guy bonded these cables. Let's see if that makes a difference, and let's calculate. Oh, it brought it down a little bit. What if we added... Um, Let's go back to the mitigation strategy, and let's look at if we put a, continu a contiguous copper cable all the way 
for the full mile and a half. So let's go back up to section one. And we will check this box, check this box. And we're going to check all. And we're going to take this one out. Just to make sure we're okay. And we will recalculate everything. And lo and behold, we've reduced the steady state voltages from, from the original numbers down to about six volts. Can we download a report? Absolutely. So this is two mitigation, and we have just completed our project basically. Let's let's go back to steady state. Let's look for our project again, and here's number two. We're going to. And this is how we bring it back up again. This is how we load our case. We hit go. And if you remember, we had two pipelines. And we can calculate again. Hit OK. So what we've done is is we've taken from taken the original Steady state, about 26 volts. We could produce a report. And this is our steady state chart for induced voltages and currents. So we made an improvement there. So what's left? Where do we go from here? How about fault currents? We should take a look at those. So we want to see what effect it has both on the safety of the people in the field as well as what is going to happen to the voltages across across the coatings. So what we'll do is we'll we'll hit fault current and we need to come up with our uh, scenario. So we're dealing with number two. Let's look at number two first. This is without mitigation. Number two, horizontal circuit. And I'm going to put in, um, let's put in um, 800 amps. This is what the power, this is what the power company told us that will work for the maximum current. We're going to say the average power resistance is about 5 ohms. We're going to say the tower separation is about 350 feet. And we're going to say the fault tower node is at the PI, number four. We're going to save. We'll call it two, two faults. Save it. Oh, we're missing something. Let's do Okay. Ah, here it is. I failed to um Bring in tower uh, steady state number two. Now we're set, and we're going to go with wire number six. So this is something you have to remember: is to make sure that you have 
And you notice that it gave us an error. That it wouldn't allow us to go until until I loaded the steady state in there. Now we could save the case of two faults. And this is a, a good way to learn as you're going along. So so when you get an error, that means you miss something. And this is easy to do. Now the site has been successfully saved. Now we could calculate. Save and calculate. So this is good. I like to look at it as individual. And it says that we have uh, 70 volts on one end and um, basically 20, 20 volts on the other end. So we're in pretty good shape. We also have an arc distance of 1.64. And also, we could do a modified calculation if, if, if we want. And we could calculate it again. And this is sometimes just to adjust your uh, uh, voltages to tweak them a little bit. Uh, there are times that um, they may be off a of volt or so, so, and doing the modified calculation will bring these into, into alignment uh, by, by tweaking it. So again, uh, um, this doesn't look bad, but what about mitigation on this side? Well, we could do, mit we could do the same mitigation that we did with steady state. So let's uh, check check all. Oh, let's go first here. Section one, we're going to check. Section two, we're going to check. We're going to bond. Pipe one and two. We're going to hit all. Try it again. Okay, true. There we go. Okay. Now we'll check it. We want to make sure that they're all all uh, all checked. So so we have a contiguous parallel mitigation wire uh, on both lines. We can calculate the output. And you notice we brought the uh, uh, voltages down. So, so this will tell us that uh, our only area of concern is is at uh, about almost 0.9 tenths of a mile. We have just completed the entire mitig mitigation strategy. The most important things you need to be aware of. Is, is when you're doing this, and we can download the report, open it, and of course you can save it. Most important thing is current. The current on the power, uh, tower lines is important to know. The second most important thing to know is the coding conductance or coding resistance. I strongly urge that you do a good uh, coding assessment of your pipeline using the coding conductance methods to determine that resistance. And your soil resistivities are, are a prime example of how AC corrosion can occur, particularly when you're less than 1,000 ohm centimeter. It only takes volts single volts sometimes to cause AC corrosion. And this is one of the most important factors. 
The other area that I strongly suggest to know inside out is, is how to determine the mitigation strategies, how to calculate. This is this is probably one of the most most important factors is 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 whether to use a mitigation cable, to use discrete anodes that's basically a deep well on each end, or or using uh, uh, multiple anodes for a section, having them spaced at uh, 50 foot intervals or 100 foot intervals. Uh, I'm a big proponent of putting the cable in a, a, a contiguous cable where you get a more effective um, reduction in, in, in potentials. Also, we need to consider the type of, uh, of, of uh, isolation that's involved, the decouplers. And we work with the Dairyland products very closely on this, on, on their decouplers, on their gradient control mats. These are important for a good installation. My suggestion is is what you have here gives you a lot of information. And anytime you need to bring anything up, whether it's a false current, um, whether it's a steady state, We did a, a number two and a, 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 and a number two mitigation. This is number, you can label them any way you want. Remember to press go. You can calculate any time. Produce the report. Hit individual, and you have your information. The other thing I'd like to show you is um, we could show the full section of data. So if you want to look at the entire range of how this uh, information is laid out, it's right here. The length, resistivity, the cumulative, cumulative length in feet and miles, the tower. And we could have multiple towers here, uh, angles, so on and so forth. And here we had the angles over here on, on tower uh, on pipeline one, and that's important. Uh, you could export this to Excel, and you could open it up. And here's here's your data here. Our next version will allow you to put all your data in Excel spreadsheet, which may be quicker, and then import it into into the program. We're, we're looking at uh, various methods to do this. This will be um, the next revision. We're also looking to put current density, calculate current density, into, into the program. In other words, the current density will be part of these sections, and that, that will be laid out and we know how important current density is in, in relation to uh, AC corrosion. If there are any questions regarding uh, any of the above, you can contact Joe Pikus at uh, jpikus at ttoolboxes.com, or you could call my cell at any time, 832-758-0009. Thank you, and have a good day.